This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at how we recognise that lease expense through profit or loss on your low value assets and short term leases. So you've got the rule and then there is an example. And once we've done that, that's pretty much it. The same rules apply to any scenario for low value assets and short lease assets. So we know and we've said already that it's going to go through profit or loss. Key bit to note is that it's done on a straight line basis. So that means that we charge equal amount every single year. So to work out the rental expense per annum, uh, what we will go through and do is we look at the total lease payments divided by the number of years on the lease, so that the lease period, which you'd think would be very, very straightforward to work out that expense. It is, but you do just need to be careful because what you tend to see within exam questions is you might have to pay uh, an additional deposit up front, which forms part of your lease payments. And you might also have to pay, or as well, I say have to pay, you may also be incentivized via a lease holiday so if you've got a say a three-year lease then maybe you have to only make payments for two out of those three years so you don't pay anything within that first year so incentivizing you to take out that lease so let's go through and, and have a look at the example uh, it says explain how mango would account for the lease in the financial statement so when we're looking at the financial statements what we are looking at there, you'd think straight away, is the statement of profit or loss. Which makes perfect sense. But if you start seeing things such as deposits, such as, as we see in this question, uh, a rent-free period, there is some impact on the statement of financial position. Again, the question is looking at it from the perspective of Mango. Mango must be the lessee. We're not worried about the lessor. We can save that for a later date. So what have we got here? Uh, it says banana leases out to Mango. So banana is the lessor. Mango is the lessee. That's us. Uh, four year lease. And it says there Mango elect to apply the low value exemption. So they're not going to recognize the asset and the liability on the SFP. They're saying, look, this machine is low value, so therefore we will go through there. We've looked at low value on a lease by lease basis, and we'll go through there and see, uh, therefore, that we're not going to recognize the asset or the corresponding liability. It says the annual lease rentals are $2,000. They're payable in arrears. In this instance, it doesn't make too much difference that the payments are either made in arrears or in advance. But the key bit on this question is that we've got a rent free period in the first year. So what that then means is out of the four years of the lease, we're only making three payments. Because what's that then going to do is therefore, if I'm then working out my expense per annum, which appears within the statement of profit or loss, then what we're going to go through and have there is we're going to have three lots of $2,000 divided by your four years. So two threes are six, 6,000 divided by four. Is $1,500 per annum that goes through the statement of profit or loss. Is that okay? Yeah, pretty easy, isn't it? OK, but let's just go through and have a look at it in just a little bit of detail and look at it each year. So what we've got is let's have a look at a three column approach. We'll look in the first column 
we'll look at the year. Second column, statement of profit or loss. Third column, statement of financial position. And I know you're looking at me. I can see you there. Look, hello. Uh, you think, what's the SFP? What, what we're just recognising the expense. We've paid the lease rentals. That's the issue. We haven't paid the lease rental, have we, in year one? Remember, year one, it was a rent-free period. So what's happening here in year one, the statement of profit or loss, my rental expense is 1,500, isn't it? Now, to get that expense, I'm debiting the statement of profit or loss with 1,500. And I'm crediting my accruals with 1,500. I've accrued that expense for the year. So within your current liabilities, your accruals are there at 1,500 because you've not paid anything at all in year one. In year two, what have we got? Well, this is where the, the challenge is now. Because what you've got in year two is that the expense is still 1,500. So again, if I'm thinking about my journal entries, I've debited the statement of profit or loss, increasing the expense with 1,500. But this year we made a payment in year two. So I've credited the bank. In this instance with the 2000 now hopefully by now you realize that that, that that doesn't balance does it so there's another entry to make well the debits exceed or sorry the credits exceed the debits careful there Christopher uh, credits are 2000 debits are 1500 so what I do is I process a balancing figure a debit entry of 500 and that debit entry is to my accruals and that reduces the accruals by 500. So what we have there in year two is that my accruals are now there as 1000. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Uh, what you can then go through and do is you should then see if you carry that on for year three, again, the expense that you have in year three is 1,500. The accrual reduces by another 500 from 1,000 down to 500. Because again, I processed that the same entry here in year three is what I have in year two. I've paid another 2,000. I've recognised another expense of 1500 and I've released the accrual by another $500. And then finally, is it there in year four? The expense is 1500 and you release that final 500 so that the accrual comes down to nil. Excellent. So in the exam, if you've got an exam question in SEMA F1, it's in relation to leases and low value or short life assets. You've got to be really careful that one, you get the expense correct. And I think most people can normally get the expense correct. But make sure that you focus upon what's happening on the SFP, but also as well focus upon what's happening in the particular year as well. Because when you're looking at the years, it might not necessarily ask you for the balance from the SFP and the statement of profit or loss in year one, it could be in year two. Likewise as well, just be careful when you're looking at the statement of profit or loss. Here we looked at it on an annual basis. Uh, we entered into this lease at the start of the year. Just be careful if we enter into a lease part way through the year, you're going to have to go through there and prorate the expenditure on a monthly basis. So there's a couple of tricks that the examiners have up their sleeve. So just make sure that you're aware of them. How do you become aware of them? 
question practice. Practice the questions that you've got in our tests online. Practice the questions that you've got within your study text or the revision question and answer bank from your chosen tuition provider. Other than that, that's it in terms of short life, low value assets. It's a consistent treatment. You just need to be aware of the little tricks that the examiners could have up the sleeves that we just spoke about then.